May God bless everyone. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for giving me this opportunity again to come and share the goodness of God, what God has done in my life. It's a privilege. Yeah, because, and before I start, I will introduce myself. I'm Lucy Nyongesa. Nyongesa is my father's name. So, me as Lucy, I grew, I come from the Catholic background. I went to school in Catholic schools. The sisters, the nuns were my teachers, very disciplined, strict. That's the life I grew up. So I grew in that life till I finished my fourth form or levels. Then, um, but uh, before I, let me go behind a little bit. We are born with, in my mother's house. My I come from a polygamy family. Just my mother was a first wife. Though they were not together anymore with my dad, but we were two girls with my father, with my mother, two girls, two boys. So we are just born four. So my sister came early to Germany because she dropped out of school. She came in Germany in 1992. That's how she came to Germany. And why am I mentioning her is because my salvation touches her life too, because it came through somewhere and she, she was there. So she came in 1992, she got a white man, she married to, German, to a German man. So she lived in Germany. So she didn't want me to stay behind after my own levels, I was working also in Kenya. But after that, she didn't want me to remain there because we are only two girls. So she wanted me to come, I'm the elder and she's the youngest. So I came to Germany in 1995. But her life from Kenya, she was a street girl. When I say street girl, I think everybody understands she was a prostitute that everybody knew, my parents knew. Mommy, I was a good girl. I was that innocent girl. So when I came to Germany, I joined her. I lived with her because she needed me to be with her always. So I knew what she did. So I only wanted to leave her the way we had left her do her thing in Kenya. Because in Kenya, people don't bother prostitutes. They know they are good ladies. They know they are rich. They know they pay their rent on time and everything. Nobody bothers them. They are very protected. So when I came, she, after a while, I stayed with her. After a while, she started thinking, OK, she want to take me to a, 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 an outing. You know, now she was introducing me slowly in that in that field without me knowing. So we went out one time on a Friday, went to a party, went to, to a discos. We came back home, okay, fine, no. So when we went back the second time, you know, men want to know the new, the new girl who has just come in, who has just come because she first took me to where she works. We call it work. So when I went there, so all the men, you know, they come, they want to know the new girl, the new girl, I, was, I, was, I, I couldn't imagine that somebody can sleep with two, three men in a day, not in a day, in, in, in an hour, or for me was just a terrible thing. So I wondered what she wanted. She said, this thing, you get used to it. You get used to it. I said, what is that? I said, how can I do that? So she introduced me to one man of which, okay, we came to know each other for a while. So that was the only man now I knew. But after a while, I met a friend. When I met my friend, a girlfriend also from Kenya, she came at the same time. So she's the one who was now pulling me more inside to that field. She said, let's go, let's go to the disco, let's go to the party, let's go to the club. So we went in these clubs, non-clubs. And from there, that's when I entered into prostitution. But my sister never wanted me to do that. Though she is the one who introduced me to it without knowing, and later she said, I don't want my sister to do this. So she found me one time sitting in a club. Some club she was coming, she found me, she got so angry with me. But me, I said, oh. As long as I can send home money for my children and everything, so she left me. 
So we continue. So can you imagine two daughters being prostitutes from a mother? It's like a curse. Though for her, she was known, she did it, but me, nobody knew I was doing it. Not my brothers, not my father, nobody, not my mother, nobody knew I was doing it. Only her knew that I was doing it. So I continued in that field and uh, I became even a professional. I was not the one, not that prostitution of staying on the roads and to stop the cars. No, I was like now calling myself a class, a classic. You know, you just take somebody for dinner. You just travel with somebody to this country, to that country, you're paid. That's the life I lived. I had a lot of money. I had it. So when Sister Claire used to give her testimony, I used to see myself in it. So when Sister Claire came into Belgium, she asked me to give my testimony. She told me, Lucy, you know, when you just say that testimony, I just saw myself. So it was so much connected. The only thing I didn't do, I never smoked, but to drink, I drank a lot. I could drink, I could drink any type of drink, but I never got drunk because I was just used to it. So moving from all countries, I went to Spain, I went to England, I went to Germany, all over Hamburg, Berlin, all those cities, I was there. So along the way, I also, along that time, I met a, a man also in the prostitution world who loved me now. This man came with real love. This man wanted, wanted somebody. He did just want to come and say, okay, I'll pay you money or what, what. But me, I didn't take it that way. I said, mm -mm, there's nothing for free here. So, but he gave in, he gave in. He used to pay, he used to pay. But he was a soldier. So he went on a, on a trip, he went on a mission in Kosovo. The time Kosovo, they had problems that time. So he disappeared and me that moment also I disappeared. I went back home. So when I came back, I found that he had come back and he was looking for me. So for me, he didn't want to look for somebody else but he was looking for me. So he found my sister. And he asked my sister where I was. My sister said, Lucy went to Kenya, but she will be coming. So when I came, we met and that became a true love. So when I came, he said, now you're my wife. But little I knew that this man was a married man. Even that time he said, I'm his wife. He had left a wife in the house. So this man, I used to meet him anytime I want to see him, he came. So for me, I knew that he was not married because a married person, you don't see him anytime you want. So we move, we continue the relationship for like four years. And then he, before opening up that he was married. But anyway, that's now how now we started that. I started now the, I was a little bit in front. So when I found out that he was married, it was too late. We had already married. He divorced, his divorce just lasted for four months. It went so fast, just because he wanted to get me. So we, we got married. Though it was not allowed to do the wedding in the, in the church because he had done it already. So even if I was married with him, I still went on the street. I still went on the street. I did my job. I had people who could call me, oh, I'm in Berlin, I'm coming, I'm on the way, or I'm in Hamburg, I'm coming, I'm on the way, can you come? I could leave. I could leave and go and he can escort me and bring me back home. He was just also in the system. So my sister comes uh, in between and after I've got married, I've come now to Belgium. My sister te tells me she had a vision. So for me, I never knew that God can speak to anybody. I never knew God speaks to people. Catholic, we went to church once in a year or Easter time, Christmas time. When she came from holiday, she said, Lucy, I saw the face of God. I couldn't believe it. I said, now, how did you, how, I want him, her to describe to me. I said, describe, how did he look like? How was the face? How was, and she described, she said, this is how the face looked like. So as Catholic, you know, you, you know the pictures we see on the wall. 
eh? the Jesus picture, Mary picture. So I'm trying to say, let's go to that cathedral, look for these pictures and tell me which picture did you see? She couldn't find any, any of them because the face she, she saw was totally a different face. So she come back, this girl comes back, but she didn't take it serious like, okay, God wants me in a way or what, no. She comes back, she forgets about it. She moves on her way, she still goes on the street, everything goes well. So we finish that story, we leave it like that. She gets sick, she got sick, and she was even um, sacked from, she lost her job because of her sickness. And in that time, she was supposed to go for operation, which was the sixth operation that she was going to the surgery, sixth. And she was telling me, this time I don't think I'll make it. So she was telling me, Lucy, take care of my children. Take care of the, me. I didn't want to hear say, how will I take care of your children? Me, I live in Belgium. Your children are here. She said, no, I don't think I'll make it. I think this time I'm going. So that she was, she went on checkup on, on Thursday. Then we have a weekend in between. Then the surgery was on Tuesday, the following week. So from Thursday, she started talking to God. She just asked, she was just asking God, God, if you are real, if you are real, I don't want to go for this operation because she was so scared. And that time she mentioned, God, if you are real, according to how she narrated to me, she was striked by a lightning which came through the window. There was no rain. It was a day, sunny day. She said she fell down. When she fell down, her stomach started rolling, rolling, rolling. She didn't know what was happening. She started crying because she had a, a little boy in the house of eight years. When she was crying, she started crying and she, she went because she had some gospel songs, so gospel CDs, tapes that she used to buy and keep. She used to buy and pile them. So she went to take, she just put them on. Pastor Richard, Pastor Jeff knows Rose Muhando, he listens. So this girl puts Rose Muhando on it. Uh, Sister Helen knows Rose Muhando. She starts singing, crying. She, and we had, problem me and her, we never talked for a while. It was like a year we were not communicating. And this thing happens, she picks up a phone and call, calls me for forgiveness. And I know my sister can never go down, can never surrender, can never say I'm sorry. That's her nature. She never says I'm sorry. So when I received that phone, she tell me God had told me to talk to you and to apologize. I say, God, which God? I said, does God speak to people? I say, Lucy, a voice was clear. And the first, he told me to pick that phone and call your sister. She called me and that time I opened my heart and I forgave her. And I say, I forgive you with all my heart. I have nothing on you. And that word that I spoke opened her heart and she started calling people now. Everyone she knew she has offended she started now calling everyone, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She was crying, she was in tears. So that's how her salvation started in the house. So when I heard about that story, I'm in Belgium, I said, no, 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 no. I want to go and see with my own eyes, this girl, how she looks, because I know she's a proud girl, high-nosed girl. She's just somebody who don't, who don't look, she look people so low. So I said, let me go and see her. When I reached, in her house, I looked at her. It, the, the duration was like two months difference. And I saw how she looked. And I said, if really God can make you look like this, I want him. This is the God I am, because I knew my sister. She was a chain smoker. She was smoking, I don't know like what. But when I saw her, the way she was humbled, the way she was looking like, I just say, if God can change you like that, that God you told me, he told you to call me, that's the God I want. So I just talked like that and we left it like that. So she continued now, she started changing things, seeing even scriptures on, on 
on the wall in the dream and she come to tell me this scripture we never read the bible we don't know how the bible is supposed to be read she started reading the bible she started seeing scriptures on the wall she goes to the to the bible and she started checking and this bible she was given by her father-in-law long time ago her father-in-law gave her that bible so that's the bible she was using to check so when uh, she told me god had told her to start night visions me, I'm in Belgium, say, okay. So I made sure that every second week I have to go to this night vision because I started loving this thing, this God, this, this changing God. I just want him, I just want him. So every second week I make sure on a Friday I'm in her house. And the people who came for this night vision were all prostitutes, all of them. There was no normal person. All women were prostitutes, but the some were like two, when they were back in Kenya, some were married with pastors and they just backslided. So they know this Pentecostal thing, but we didn't know that. So we went to this night visions. We could sing these Catholic songs. We could praise, pray this Holy Mary, our father. And the power of God was manifesting for real. And I said, "Is for me, I just know that this is God. This is just not normal. And after night vision, the next day we go to Catholic church. So we come back. When we continued like that for a while, God told her in a dream, and she came immediately to tell us that God has told us, Holy Mary is not a prayer. I say, how did you know? She said, God asked me to pray two prayers, our father who is in heaven and Holy Mary. And she said, when I prayed first, Holy Mary, there was no power of God. But when she mentioned our father, she was filled by the Holy Spirit. So that's me now who said, oh, this Holy Mary is affecting. Ah, so we started praying just our father. So we could just pray our father, singing our father without knowledge, without understanding. But God, the Holy Spirit, the power of God was manifesting. We could see people getting healed, people getting delivered, people crying, but we are still Catholics because we haven't known any other church. We don't know anything about Pentecostal. We are still singing the Catholic songs. We are still in a Catholic. So we started moving because we were 20. So every week we go to one house to pray in that house. Then we go to another house, another week like that. So we went we went to one house and on that day on that day we went as usual we put our cassette in the in the in the in the radio we started hearing the worship and we say okay let's work among the 20 was only one person who was saved and that was my sister the rest were not saved so when that song was singing it just hit my heart like a sword, feeling that pain. And I saw myself, how I crucified Jesus, how I was dirty, how I was disobedient. I just saw everything like a feeling, how I was, how I was nailing Jesus on the cross. I fell down, I cried. Nobody could pray for me because there was no pastor there. What she says, say, ah, it's her time now. It's her time. Let her cry. Let her cry. That's what she say. So I cried for like a week or more. So when I came back now, when I came back to Germany, to Belgium, my, my husband looked at me and he said, what's happening? I didn't, I said, what? I was so quiet, peaceful. I had some nice feeling in me that I couldn't explain what, why my sister struggling to understand herself, what's going on with herself and me also, and we don't have anyone to pray for us or to explain to us what's going on to tell us it's salvation or what. But for me, I knew that day, something has happened. I knew and I knew and I knew something has happened and I never changed until today. I knew from that day, that's when my journey started. So when I came to Belgium, I, I just started checking on, 
on internet to find if I can find a church. I said, ah, now which church are we going to go? And then in the, in the midst of everything, my sister said she had dreamt uh, that we were in a church somewhere and we had, uh, this church had so many colors. You know, we have, in Kenya, we know Pentecostals, they deal with colors. So when she told me about the colors, I started asking her, which color? Which I say green, white, red, uh, blue. And I said, okay, we are Pentecostal. So that's how our Pentecostal came up. So when I said we are Pentecostals, we started looking for Pentecostal. It's not anybody who taught us about Pentecostal. Nobody taught us, nobody showed us. That's how it just came up. By then, nobody is, is Nobody has prayed for us. Nobody has is baptized, nothing. We are just struggling in ourselves. What mystery is happening? So I looked for a church here in Belgium. I found a church and uh, I joined that church. I saw it was a Pentecostal church. I joined. I was the only African there. So I stayed there for like five years. When I entered in that church, I, as I was continuing in that church, I think God was using me in a way that I also didn't understand. I could just pray for somebody and get healed. I could start prophesying to people and people were asking me, what you're saying, what you're saying, what you're saying. And I, it, I never knew about a call. I never knew about working for God. What I knew is I feared to be, to be a pastor. I don't want that responsibility. I said, I don't want, but I knew because I've received Christ, I have the power to do anything. So it, there were two couples who came to me. There was a, they said they were satanists and they were so bothered with demons. And they didn't come direct to me. They came through my friend who was in the same church. And these, these people had come to that church to get delivered. So when they came to that church to get delivered, my, my friend told them, no, 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 don't go to the pastor. Come, I'll take you to my friend who prayed so much because they knew I was a prayer warrior. Because I used God just, the, God put me in prayer. I was praying. So when they came to me, I thought, now, how do I start this? When they told me they have their problem, I asked them how. So I said, okay, I can't do anything about this, but I have to go to God first. If God gives me permission to do it, I'll do it. But I don't know, for real, that moment, I didn't know where to start. I say, now patients have come to see a doctor, but now <laughs> who is going to do this? I say, God, this is your work, it's not for me. But I had thought when they told me I had re read a book called a book written by Dr. Rebecca Brown. I read her books. I had re read very well how to deliver somebody. So I told them, I gave them another appointment. So I did like a doctor say, okay, you go, come on this day so, to, so that I can prepare myself. So they came. So we went to that war and I knew I was entering in a war if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to suffer. But the good thing is I knew what I was doing. I went all my direction, how God had, was leading me. But the people around me, they were not strong. But I told them, you have to stand with me because I can't do this alone. God did marvelous things. Those people got delivered. Until today, they got born again. Until today, they're serving God. So that's how God now started working with me. So, and as I continued in that church, there was a day I'm, I had a, a friend who wanted us to pray. So she said, let's pray and we seek God. So I said, okay, if let's seek God on anything that, we, that doesn't please God in our lives. We didn't know what we were praying for, but we just said. So we went in three-day fasting and prayer. When we went in three-day fasting and prayer, God, just the last day, just the last day of, of, of my break of the fasting, 
But before I say that, when I, I, I got started using me, I fell in love with the Holy Spirit. As Sister Vanessa was saying, she noticed love. Me, I felt that humility, love, and humble. And what made me feel that this God has to be feared? And I read in the Bible that who, if you seek him, you find him. So the person I wanted to meet personally, I say this person I want is the third trinity of the Godhead. That was the Holy Spirit. I started reading the books of the Holy Spirit. As Sister Vanessa said, I read. And there was man of God who one person introduced me to his books and his teachings. I started following him and say, he said the practice of entering into the presence of God. And that attracted me. I say, uh -uh, that is what I want. I want to enter because I want to meet this, this third man, this third, this is very important person. I want him to be my friend. And I want, so this is the person I was crying for, the third Trinity, that of the Godhead. So I cried for the Holy Spirit because I wanted to meet him. So when I, when I went every day, because I told God, now show me how to pray, show me how I can worship you, show me, I don't know, but God led me to read the word because I read from Genesis to Revelation, Genesis to Revelation three times, not understanding anything. But the fourth time he started speaking, then I just started seeing things Revelation started coming up, still revelation started coming up. So I just fell in love. So as I continued worshiping him, dancing for him, just enjoying him, I never knew that the Holy Spirit was enjoying what I was doing until the day he, I got that revelation. I got the revelation that I was before the throne and that throne, there was, a person sitting there, very glorious. But in that room, we were only two people. There were nobody else, two. So, and in, when I was in that room, I was on my knees crying for mercy, crying, broken, crying, but he was smiling because that's my mind was telling me he's smiling at you. He's enjoying what you're doing. That's when I realized what I was doing Holy Spirit was enjoying. That's when I knew to say, ah, this is what I've been doing. This is the Holy Spirit that I really wanted. Because whenever I called him, I felt that I'm not alone. There was somebody with me wherever I did. Even if I was at work, if something gets lost and I start getting worried, I just say, Holy Spirit, I need it, I need it. That very moment when I look aside, even where I was looking, I didn't find it. I find the paper put there. So I walked with him. I know, I knew that whenever I am, I was with him. So when we went for this fasting, and because I knew that I have to be correct with God, of which I didn't know that it was the, 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 the marriage or anything or anything wrong, but we went, wanted to make it right. I wanted to make it right with God. So I went in prayer, three days fasting, after three days fasting, I went on internet, a man of God was preaching about the Samaritan woman. I listened to that message and it pierced my heart. So like a sword, somebody knifed me. I had pain and I cried. I went on the floor. I cried. I said, oh, maybe because I didn't marry in the church. That was my, my small thinking mind. But God was telling me something else. So what? Uh, because of that, the pain I had, I repented. I cried to God. I told my husband, say, you know what? I think we have to sanctify our marriage. You have to go. We have to go to church. So we were convinced him. We went to church. I went to tell this pastor. This pastor never interviewed us. Where we come from, how we met, if he's married before or not. So he just prepared a marriage ceremony and we got married. 
I thought I'll have peace. I never had peace. Until two years later, I had just joined Virtuous Women. I had just joined Virtuous Women. I was not long time in. So my, I had a friend, a sister who was also a Virtuous Woman in Brussels. She was, there was a, a holiness meeting in Brussels and she invited me. It was a three day holiness meeting. So people came from all over Europe. So we met there so many people because that's when people are just hearing holiness, holiness, people want to amend their ways and they want to know more about dressing and all this stuff. So me going there, I had all people asking questions, but I didn't ask any question. So the next day, again, I didn't ask any question, but my heart started burning. I started feeling a burning in my heart. I was feeling like I can't, I'm not comfortable, I cannot sleep. And I was wondering, but I didn't know how I can tell my question because I wanted the question to be answered. So I went to the hostel with the, my friends where we were sharing a room. And then I told them, I say, my sisters, now we are mending our ways. Now me, I'm married to somebody who is divorced. Is it a, is it a good thing? Is it a, so that is what was burning my heart. But my sisters could not answer me anything. They just directed me to some pastors. Sister Claire was one of them. There was a pastor in America and there was a pastor in Germany. Pastor Jeff, you know him. Uh, you know the holiness pastor in Germany. So I, I took those numbers, I came home. So I called this pastor in Germany. I explained my story to him. And he told me, take your Bible, take your Bible. I say, okay. He gave me Malachi chapter two from verse 14, going down. He said, read, I read, I read. He said, what does it say? I, he explains to me. He said, okay, go to Matthew 19, verse one to nine. I read, I read, I read. He said, okay, what does it say? And, and then he don't explain. And then he said, okay, first Corinthians seven, read it all, I read it all. He said, where do you think you fit? Where do you think you fit? I say, I don't know. I say, I don't know. Then I told this pastor, pastor, I'm married for 17 years. He said, it doesn't matter. He's not your husband. I say, oh my God. I say, what did I get into? 17 years? I say, where do I start? So my husband never knew anything. So the next day, Sister Claire used to have morning devotion with us around five o'clock till six. So I woke up for that, for that devotion. When I went after praying, after praying, I, I called Sister Claire. I said, Sister Claire, I have a question. I say, okay, say it. I explained. She said, hi, come out from that marriage. It's not yours. Come out. She shouted. I said, oh my God, where did I get into? My husband doesn't know anything. So I kept quiet. I called again that pastor in America. They gave me all of them the same scriptures. So I came back and started reading the scriptures before I told my husband anything. So when I read Malachi chapter two from verse 14 and 16, I found out that I'm not the, the wife of the youth, of his youth. So I say, I'm not the wife of his youth. So that means I'm not his wife, okay. I went to Matthew 19, from verse one to nine, I put myself in those lines. I say, okay, if a man puts away his wife and marries another, he commits adultery with her. <laughs> I say, okay, left his wife and married another, which is me. So I was putting myself in the lines. I say, yeah, okay, this is it. I went to First Corinthians seven to read the mixed, mixed marriages. I found out that and for real, I'm a mistress for all the 17 years I've been a mistress. So I went to my husband, I told him, do you know what is going around? He said, what? I said, we are divorcing. I didn't explain it, I just said, we are divorcing. He said, what? Are you crazy? I said, yes, I am. But this is what the word of God say. He told me, what did you get in Brussels? I said, no, it's not about Brussels. This is what the word says. So I gave him the scriptures. He read, but he didn't understand anything. 
He didn't understand anything. I just went to God. I said, God, if you are the one speaking, please make him understand what you are telling me. He read again. He said, no, now he told me, now we have to take, to take it to our pastor so that we tell them. So when we went there, everything break loose. It's like it scattered everything. It scattered the whole church. It scattered everyone. So I was the old one out. So they told me, I want to make people divorce. I started, they started rejecting me. You want to divorce your husband. You have another person. You have this and this. They put a lot of things. I said, the word of God stands. Because I was firm and I was real and I knew it's true and I never doubted. I say, the Bible stands. Stands. I went to another pastor with his wife. I said, what do you preach? What do you preach about marriage? And he said, okay, some issues are different, you know, lose. I said, what difference is the word of God says? As long as the husband still alive or the wife is still alive, you stay single. I say, no, 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 Lucy, it's not like that. Everybody's different. So I felt like, I, I, I said like these pastors are not telling us the truth. I felt angry, I felt disappointed. I'm going to church and nobody tells me the truth. Nobody interviews me, nobody. So I felt so angry, I felt, but anyway, I was thrown out of the church because of that, because I, it's like a virus. I'm, I'm going to, to, uh, to, 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 eh? To give everybody virus about divorce, divorce and people are going to leave their husbands. Some people are married seven times. My pastor said, you know, people are married seven times. Some are married 14 times. Where are they going to go with the children? So Lucy, I think that point you are saying, we don't see your scriptures very well. I say, you can't understand and you're a pastor for years. So that's how I left that. I left that church. But I knew God is saying, so when I came home, People started visiting him. My pastors came from nowhere. They are different because people, stories go around. Say, Lucy, we want to cancel you. You have to, you know, this, when you are born again, the old things are past. You become a new creation. I say, all that you are telling me is true, but it's not talking about marriage. It's true what you're saying, but it doesn't talk about marriage. Marriage is totally something different with salvation. Salvation is salvation, marriage is marriage. God is speaking seriously about marriage. So they couldn't challenge me. They came with their stories about King David. I could, they couldn't challenge me at all. I was firm. I stood firm on the word of God and I say, it's final. So I reached a place, I got tired. I said, I'm not going to, to entertain any more, any more thing. I went to God. I went to God. I said, God, speak to me about this. I want God to speak himself. I said, God, I want to hear from you. Even if you have used your servants, but I want to hear from you. So I went in the morning. I went for morning devotion with Sister Claire. After that, I went to sleep again. It was a very short revelation. In that short revelation, I saw myself in a court. I had a case. And in this case, I was accused, I, will, I had stolen somebody's husband. But I saw the, the police were standing there, the judge was sitting there, and I saw my husband and his wife. But my husband and his wife were like in the 20s, 22, young, very young couple, holding hands, a woman dressed in a wedding gown, the man in a wedding suit, and me, I'm standing in front where the people who are accused stand and the prosecutor was just next to me and the police was standing there. So when the judge took my file to read and he turned his head to the right and I followed his head to the right where he was looking at. When I looked, I saw, hey, I say, this is my husband and his wife. They were so young. And then I said, oh my God, I'm alone. This is not my husband. So they read my case, they say, I'm accused. I stole somebody's husband. So the police took me out. I was crying and broken. I was really crying. It was so painful. So painful, I was crying, so hurting. I say, I am alone now. And so they took me out and I woke up from that dream. When I woke up from that dream, I packed my things. I just told my husband, I'm leaving. 
I can't say, he say, no, 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 we can't live like that. You know what, you have to prepare yourself. I can give you a, some, a room and I stay in a different room. I thought, okay, it can work. For my imagination, I thought it will work. But when he left, I went to the kitchen. I, I think I was doing my cleaning and a voice spoke to me, clear voice. I was alone at home. He told me, what you started with the law, you have to finish with the law. I said, that's it. So when he came, I started calling, looking for apartment. I call my children where they are. I said, we are moving out. My daughter looks for apartment, we moved out. And that's how I left to restitute a marriage of 17 years. And that's how God started working with me, has been working with me all through. And as God has been helping me, I've been teaching people. God has helped me a lot through Pastor Jeff. I work with uh, Pastor Jeff. I work with uh, Pastor Richard, Sister, Sister, um, Sister, what is her name again from Sweden? Sister Rachel. We work with Sister Rachel also. We work with several pastors, Sister Glorious, together as a team. It's, we are working for the kingdom of God. It's nothing like this group is working, this church is that we have put all as a king, as everything for the kingdom. We talk about marriage, we talk about holiness. And whenever they invite us, we come to support. We, whenever they come to our meeting in CMHI, for virtuous women, we have sisters who join us also as Sister Glorious, who is also a virtuous woman, and Sister Rachel, who is also a virtuous woman. We are working together as a team. So um, initially saying this, this testimony to encourage people, to encourage all my sisters, because the Bible say, whoever God forgave much, <laughs> God expects much from her. I know God has forgiven me a lot. God has forgiven me a lot of things and I've given myself to be used. And as I'm growing and I'm still a, a, young, a young minister, and I didn't just start ministering alone. God gave me a revelation before I knew I'm, I'm called. God had shown me so many revelations before, but I never followed much until the day I saw myself going to pick, to pick a diploma in an office. And I went in that office and I saw three people sitting on a table, everyone with the computer. And the middle person asked me, can we help you? I said, yes, I've come to collect my diploma. And he said, please, can you sit? Your diploma is just almost finished. I could see the details inside the computer, how it was printed. So when it came out, I touched it. It was hard paper, original. So I said, huh, this is an original. So when I came from that office, jumping up, I was giving people fruit, giving people apples. So that's when I knew God has called me in a ministry. And since then, I've never sat down relaxing. And uh, my, as we are always sitting here, listening to our pastor who is teaching us, actually the teaching that he's teaching us every day, it's helping a lot. There are many people outside there who even don't know what salvation is, but they're going to church. As I was evangelizing, somebody I asked people, most of the people had, are you a Christian? They say, yes. Are you born again? Yes. When you ask what is, what is being born again, they cannot tell you. They don't know. I've talked with pastors who are pastors preaching to people, but they still don't know what being born again. I've been talking to several pastors from Rwanda, and I've been directing them also to Pastor Jeff from Burundi. And we are working as a team. So I encourage everyone to come and listen to these teachings because it's not for us, it's for other people. 
Because the moment I taught that message of six seeds, people, I got a lot of response that pastors came in. I was even shocked that pastors don't know this. And I had to explain to them and I had to help them. And some I'm still working with them till today. And they are changing slowly by slowly. Somebody is in the church and he's doing fornication and he's a pastor praying for other people. So as some um, communicating with Pastor Jeff is helping me, giving me ideas and teaching me. And I encourage, please, we should not take it for granted. As we come, this message is very important teaching. It's not for us, it's for other people. And we are all ministers. And to, we thank God that we have this privilege that we can hear this to bring out. We have a pastor who God has put, a, put above us that we have to look at him and he's teaching us. So let's concentrate because we are not paying anything. We don't go to, to school. Some people pay money for that. So we thank God for the ministry of CMHI, which is helping us in Jesus' name. So that was my testimony. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. May the Lord continue to bless you. We have been blessed. I, I know I've heard the testimony several times. I, each time I hear the testimony, I feel very blessed. Many people have been blessed. Many people have been strengthened. I pray that those that are hearing the testimony for the first time have been strengthened. We'll come up maybe with one or two follow-up questions. So what uh, the Dalusi was talking about is what the Lord said in my Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 18, my people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of the living waters, made out them cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. We have chosen things of the world that does not profit us. We have seen ministers of God. The six seas that basically she's talking about, these are the basic um things that a Christian needs. One is confession. The second one is consecration. The third one is commitment. We need to be committed. The fourth one is communion, which you need to be communion, one with God, Holy Spirit, fellow Christians, your calling, your own calling. And the last one, which is clinging on to the Holy Spirit. These are the six fundamental seeds which we need as Christians. We've done an extensive teaching on these things. And yeah, I understand she has done a lot of teachings also after our teachings here. She has been helping ministers of God. And most ministers of God, it's unfortunate that they do not quite understand the concept of being born again. What can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? We want to encourage people to be rooted in the word. Let us come and be rooted in the word. Learn together, grow together. As a ministry, we have nothing to offer except the word of God. Heaven belongs to God and we enter through the righteousness of God. Evangelist Lillian. Praise the Lord. Yes, we want to thank God again for your testimony, our sister. And may the Lord continue to use you and to give you more testimony. Amen. So we have our other evangelist, our minister, evangelist Kate. So we let her in and she can share with us because we see the flyer we have out there. We see her putting on, um, you actually can't tell she's the one. So she's putting on, I thought it was the man when you're looking at her. I did not know it was her, uh, but I had some questions with her. Why, like, this is not you. So. And now she's looking different. So we want to hear her testimony from right before her salvation and what made her to be the way she is now. Evangelist Kate, you are welcome. God bless you. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you all have known my name, Evangelist Catherine, Brethren calls me Kate. Praise the Lord. I thank God Almighty for giving me this privilege to testify about my salvation. The journey of my salvation. 
It's a privilege, brethren. I want to appreciate God for what he has done. Um, I'm from Nigeria, as Pastor Jeff has said it. I'm from Nigeria, capital of Nigeria, that is Abuja, but presently I'm in Lagos, by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Brethren, it's all started like this. Uh, the book of Romans told us, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, told us, all have seen and come short of the glory of God. No one taught me sin. I think I inherited sin from my forefathers, that is Adam and Eve. I inherited sin from them. And I was living a wayward life. I was living in sin. You can see my picture when you look at the flyers. I look like man. I'm, I didn't look like a woman. I bob my hair. I don't make my hair. I bob my hair. When you see me, you think maybe this, this person is a man. But our Lord Jesus Christ changed me. He changed me. He changed me. It started from when I came to Abuja, capital of Nigeria, the place I was working. Though when I was young, from 15 years, 16 years, 18 years, I loved the things of God. I loved children of God. But I don't know how to do it. When I see them, I love them, but I don't know how to do it. I find it difficult to follow them. So it happened that there was a man, a pastor. He do come to our office. I work in oil and gas in Abuja there. It's a company. Anytime that man comes, he will preach about heaven, hell, repentance. These three things, that was what he was preaching. So I continue preaching one day. I made up my mind. I said, okay, there was a church. I decided to attend a vigil. I live a normal life. I like, I go to church. If I don't like, I won't go to church, you know. I decided to attend vigil. So I was in the church. Multitude were there, crowd were there. The, the owner of the church called me. He called my name. I stood up. He, she said, do you know that you are a servant of God? That you have a call? There is a call in you. So when she mentioned that, I forgot about it. I said, what is she saying? So the daughter came up because the woman and the daughter, they were the one taking care of the ministry. The daughter came up saying the same thing. She said, I should go and pray that she cannot give me prayer. That the anointing is so in me that is not up to her own, that she, she cannot give me prayer to go and pray. That I should refer me to the founder of the ministry, that is the daughter of the woman. So, but what she was saying, I don't want it because I was looking for money. I want God to bless me, I want money. So I don't want all this call of a thing. So I left after the, the, the program, I left the place. Yet I've not seen what I was looking for. I went to another church. The person was telling me the something, another church. So I was angry. I said, what are they saying? I said, I don't know what is called, call, please. You people are not telling me what I want. So I forgot about them. I went to another place. So I was behaving like a mad person. There's something within me troubling me, but I don't know the it overpower me. I don't know how to control it. So when I went to the second, the third church, the person was saying the same thing. So at a time, I noticed that these people mean the business. I said, okay, God is calling me. In which area is calling me? 
I began to pray. I said, okay, let me pray. By then, I have my boyfriend. I have my boyfriend. The parents knows us. My parents knows him. So was the only son of the family, a rich family. So they were like, we should come because the boy is the only son of the, 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 the father. So when they were talking about our marriage and the, the issue of all these things, because it started so early in my young age. So all this issue of God is calling you into ministry, God is calling you. I said, no. So when everything got lost, the boy was misbehaving, you know, to me, I said, okay, let me pray. Does it mean that what they are saying is true? But I'm kind of person that if I want something, I love praying by myself. I don't like people telling me this, that. I love praying and to confirm it from the Lord. So I went because I was born and brought up in a Catholic church. There is a place called Blessed Sacrament in Catholic. So I went there to go and pray concerning what they were telling me. I was on fasting. I said, okay, God, they said you are calling me. In which area are you calling me? Is it true? So when I go to the, a particular place in that uh, 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 chapel to pray, I was kneeling down. I raised my head up. I was praying. There were other people there. A young boy got up and opened a Bible. He was coming to my front. He dropped the Bible in my front and pointed hand at a particular chapter. So it was like a magnet. I don't know how it happened. I brought my head down. The boy didn't utter a word. He only placed hand on that chapter and he did not tell me anything, he did not utter a word. And he didn't occur to me to look at his face to know who he, he is. Then he left and left the Bible. It was a good news Bible, big Bible. And left the Bible there. So when I look at the place he pointed hand, he said, the spirit of the Lord, Isaiah, it was Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Lord have anointed you to do this, to do that, to do this. After doing this, this is what the Lord is going to do for you. So I, I, I stood up. I ran out to go and look for the boy to ask him, what is the meaning of this? I didn't see him. I don't know whether he ran away or he branched somewhere or he disappeared. I don't know. So I came inside again. I packed my things. I went home. When I went home, I called my boyfriend. I said, this thing they are telling me is true because when they were telling, giving me that message in the church, he was there also. So, because the lady was telling me how the ministry will be and how I'm going to go far. If I, he, he saw me in the white man country with white people ministering. So when he finished saying all those things, the boy was now interested. I mean, my boyfriend. So I'm just telling you the journey of my salvation. So when I came back from the way I went to pray on my own, I didn't tell anybody anything. I was just praying in my mind. Father, is it true? Because all I have, I've seized. I don't have anything anymore. Everything I've, I was behaving like a mad person. So brethren, I called him. I said, I'm leaving you. I'm not leaving you because I have another man I want to marry or, but I'm leaving you because of Christ. I want to serve God. He said, no, that I want to disgrace him, that people knows me, people knows both of us. I want to leave him so that I can disgrace him. I said, no, I want to serve God. Then as he refused, I was in the house. He came in the night in my house. Then I was doing something. He was talking to me. I refused to answer him. A thought came to me and said, lock your door lock your door and hide the key somewhere i don't i never know what i was doing but it's something was controlling me i padlock just like look at it look at for example this padlock you have to padlock the door outside so he said i should padlock this door i should pick this padlock and put hide it somewhere outside i should not lock the door so i got up where i was with him i unlocked this key i unlocked the key i hid it somewhere the same thoughts came to me and said off your phone i off my phone he said i should hide it somewhere i hide it it was outside the house not in my room then i never know what i was doing but the power that was 
controlling me beyond me. I don't know what I was doing. So I took my phone, I hid my phone somewhere outside. The boy was talking to me, I refused to answer him because I'm ready to let go. Then the thought now, and I picked a bucket, I went outside as if I want to do something outside, outside the compound, he followed me. He never gave me space because I wanted to leave the compound. Then when I noticed that he was not giving me chance, the thought came again and said, listen to him, join him, rapport with him, discuss with him. Then I mellowed down, I started discussing with him, that was outside. Because the spirit of God, the fear of God came upon me as if I, if I commit sin, I will die immediately. The fear of God was so mighty on me. I never want to sleep in my room with him that night. So what happened was, as he said, I should hide my key. I hide my key, hide your phone, off your phone. I hide your, hide your phone, I hide it. Then he now said, he had been calling me, where is my phone? Remember the thought told me to hide my phone before he started calling. Then as he said, I should rapport with him because he refused to give me space to leave the compound. I started discussing with him. We went outside the compound. There was a tank that was on the compound, in front of the compound. We sat down on the tank. I was sitting down. Then the man I was leaving his house, that is my landlord. He was outside the house with the children, with the wife. That was a summertime, there was a heat. So they were lying down. As I was sitting down with that, my boyfriend, a husband to be, then the same thoughts came to me, said, get up and go and tell your landlord that you are going to sleep in their house this night. I told him, I jumped down from the pump, the tank. I said, I want to, please, I'm coming. The person that was following me all over, he refused to follow me, he, just, he was just sitting down in that, on that tank because I have rapport with him, sitting down with him, discussing. Then I came, I came to my, inside the compound. I said, sir, that, that was my landlord. I said, sir, please, I'm going to sleep in you people's room house today. He said, oh, okay. He didn't ask me what happened. Why are you abandoning your room? He didn't ask anything. I came back to the tank where we sat down. I sat down again. All of a sudden, the same thoughts came to me in a few minutes time. He said, got up, enter your landlord house. I got up, I left him, he did not follow me. I entered my landlord's house. So my door was open. I never know the meaning of what all this I, I was doing. My door was open. Then, immediately I entered, my landlord stood up from the kitchen chair. I said, lock up your door, lock your door. He said, okay, he locked the door. That, is, that was the, the, the sitting room, he locked the door, I entered, the wife's room with the children. Then as I was there, I was, I was trying to sleep. I couldn't sleep because I was, I was not having peace. I was restless. I don't know what was happening to me. Happening to me. So at the end, I had a dream early morning as if there is a hole, but a pit. They use a stick and, and put on, this, on the hole. So I was trying to pass the stick. I was finding it difficult at the end. I cross, I cross over. Then I slept off again. A little time, I had a voice from the first time in my life. He said, Exodus chapter five. Exodus five. Brethren, you can read the Exodus five. So I opened my eyes, Exodus five. I can't describe the voice. When I read the Exodus five, he was talking about Moses and Aaron going to Pharaoh, they went to Pharaoh and said, let the Israelites go and serve their living God. And Pharaoh refused. And the Moses and Aaron told Pharaoh that if they did not go and serve their living God, either he killed them by war or by disease. So I opened my eyes, it was early morning around 6 a.m. I jumped out of the house, my landlord house. I went to the neighboring place, uh, uh, my neighbor, I said, please, can you give me your Bible? I don't know what Exodus is talking about. I am an unbeliever. I don't read my Bible. I don't know what he's talking about. So the woman, I was the one who woke the woman up. She opened her gate. I entered. She gave me the Bible. I read the Exodus. The same, it was telling me about Moses and the Aaron. Then I came back. 
I put, I join it as a confirmation number two. Then I told the boy, it was when they break, broke and I noticed that the Lord never want the boy to lock my door. Why going? Then I came back to my house. I find out that he brought my picture from my telev television and tore the picture. He tore the carpet. He destroyed things in my room. The violent spirit that was in him that never want to let me go. He was de destroying things in my room. So the boy left. I came back. When I had, I experienced all those things. I said, okay, God, what so really, really what you are telling me what people are telling me is what you are telling me. So it's true. Then brethren, I began to cry. You know why I was crying? Because I know it's not easy. It's not easy. I know the challenges there. That's why I never want to hear what they are saying. I began to cry. As I was crying, I stood up in my room. I began to pack my trousers. Nobody taught me. Nobody taught me. I packed my trousers. I packed my jewelries. I packed my lipstick, my, 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 what is it called? My weave on, my attachments. I began to pack them. I was weeping in my room. I was confessing my sin. No pastor, no altar call. It was personal, me and God. It was both of us. I was crying in my room. I was confessing my sin. I was pleading for mercy. So when I stood up, I picked all those things. I went to the bill. I set them fire. It was burning. I, I stood there. I was crying. I was crying. Then when he finished burning, I came inside the house. I laid hold of my certificate, poly, poly certificate diploma. The certificate is not pure. I lay hand on my, my, my WAEC. The WAEC is not pure. I began to tear them. I was behaving like a mad person. I tore them into pieces. I tore them, I burnt them. I stood up. The following day, I went to the person, I stole his phone where we work in that office because I left the office. I told him that this thing that happened so, so, so years, I was the one that did it. Please forgive me. Restitution. Our Holy Spirit began to teach me. I told you I'm from Catholic Church. Nobody taught me all those things. I stood up. I was praying. God reminded me a man that I cheated when I was working in that office. And the, the man is from prison. He works with prison. I went to the place. I said, God, I don't have this money now. Please, can you help me? to pay back this money that I cheated them. Then I went to the prison. I met the man immediately I was there. I went to a particular office, although it wasn't easy for me to go because the prison is so tight. There are Boko Haram inside the prison, a lot of people inside the prison. So they were questioning me, asking me. I said, please, I want to see the director of this prison. They took me, a man took me to his office. He began to ask me, I said, sir, please look at what I did. Look at what I did. He said, he looked at me, he raised his head up. He looked at me, he said, are you married? I said, no. Which church do you attend? All those questions doesn't mean anything to me because there is something in me that was troubling me, trying to make me to, to, to repair all my past life. Then he asked me, do you want me to take you to the direct, director? I said, yes. We went there. It wasn't easy for me to enter. At the end, they brought me in. They discussed with the man. They told the man what I did. I said, sir, these people came to buy things. You, you, you people sent him to come and buy things years ago. I don't know whether the man is there that then. But I cheated them. The man gave me money. I didn't tell. I, I, he was looking for the money. And I never tell the man that you have given me the money. The man had to leave his goose and went back to the office and came back the next day. And I didn't tell him that you have given me the money. Now, what I did is evil. I want to pay the money back. I came to confess. The man answered, okay. He said, the money I ate is not his money, it's the government money. Brethren, the Bible said, accept our righteousness and see the righteousness of Pharisees and Sadducees. 
The man is a Muslim man. He refused to re re receive the money. He said I should buy nets and clothe the prisoners to replace the money. I came back, I wasn't having the money. Remember, the job was a dirty job. The job I was doing, it must cheat before you make money. I left the job. So I came back and knelt down and I said, Lord, please provide this money for me. I want to finish this restitution. But I was having peace. This thing happened on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was in the church. Someone came, I said, a pastor said he should give me so, so, so amount. The money was beyond what I was expecting. Then I went back to the prison and bought the net. The man, the director called the pastors in the prison, called the, 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 the malam in the prison because there you have all those ones. The, the, the director said they should pray for me. They prayed for me, I left. Brethren, that is how everything started. I came back, I never tell anybody what was happening to me. What was happening to me, my landlady noticed, my landlady, she's a, a deeper life sister. She's a women, women leader. So she noticed that something that this girl has changed and something has happened to her. My hair look like a mad person. I can't make my hair anymore. No money for me to make my hair. I begin to reshape myself. All the flamboyant life I was living, I, I, I stopped them. She called me, she said, come. I know how to make hair, let me weave your hair. I began to go to Deeper Life Bible Church. I began to learn. I began to, I don't know anything. I don't know rapture. If you ask me what is rapture, I don't know it. I began to learn. I began to study. I began to learn. So brethren, that is how I started. That is how I started. So as I was learning, I said, oh Lord, help me. But one thing the Lord helped me and know is because is that when he arrested, he made me to know the area he called me. He made me to know the things he have imparted in me, the gifts, what he gave me. He made me to know from the beginning. Due to what I pray. Beloved, I stopped because I burnt my certificate. I can never see certificate to look for a job. Except I go back to school and start again, of which I don't want to go back again. So all what I want, how I will know the Lord how I will serve the Lord. Brethren, how I will serve the Lord. How I will know the word of God. So I began to study. I began to go to Bible, uh, deeper life, but I don't go to any house church. I started with holiness, anything holiness. Anything holiness. Because the spirit of God taught me all this. Then from there, I became a children teacher. I started with the children some of them are big boys and big girls now. I started with children, teaching the children, from children to the youth, from the youth to adults. So brethren, it wasn't easy, but I want to tell us that it's very, very easy to serve the Lord if there is the grace of God. And if only you can surrender totally to him. If only you can surrender totally to him. So brethren, it was the call of God that the Lord look at the wide world, all the places that all the sinners are, the Lord decided to pick me. The Lord decided to choose me. It is a privilege. It is a privilege. So what am I saying? I began to walk with the Lord. I began to walk with the Lord. By the time the Lord opened my eyes, I began to do what he asked me to do, to preach the gospel, to make sure I proclaim his word. Hallelujah. So beloved brethren, it wasn't too easy for me. I suffered, I was plumpy. Before I was plumpy, but due to the way I suffered when, when God arrested me, I machetted. I machetted. Those that knew me before, once they see me, they will ask me, are you sick? I won't talk. 
They say, you are slim. Are you sick? I won't talk. So beloved, that is the journey of my salvation. That is how I started. I started by the Lord sending someone to come and preach to me, preaching holiness, preaching salvation, preaching repentance, preaching heaven and hell. And I desire to know God more. And I started coming closer. As I was coming closer, God helped me to know. Time will find me, the testimony of my salvation is so long, it's so long, but I want to cut this very short because of our time. So that is how I began. I started the journey of my salvation. It was the Lord himself that arrested me. No man, no, no woman. It was the Lord, he, 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 rest, he, he bestowed his fear upon me. And immediately the fear of the Lord came upon me. I was afraid of sin. And I began to seek the face of God. And at the end, the Lord blessed me. Praise the Lord. So brethren, that is the testimony of my salvation. I'm going, I just cut it off. That is the testimony of my salvation. I bless the name of the Lord. I thank him for his goodness and mercy for all he has done for me. I cannot thank him all because the Lord is so good. The Lord is so great. The, the, the same place God arrested me, that was the same place I began to preach. I began to preach. People were looking at me. Is he not this person? The Lord transformed me in that community. The Lord used me in that community till I left the place. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you, our sister. What a wonderful encounter. Amen. Amen. We thank God. So uh, I just have one question for you, my sister. So you encountered the presence of the Lord. And then because in the picture, what made you like you, what made you feel like you had to throw away all those attachments, all those trousers, all those the men is proud as like, what made you feel like you had to throw them away. Did you feel that the, the anointing of God that was on you? Did you feel like the power of God is convicting you? How, what, what, what made you throw them away? Hallelujah. The spirit of God taught me that those things are unclean, that I cannot use it anymore. Nobody taught me it was the spirit of God. When you repent genuinely, the spirit of God will teach you. He said that he will send forth his Holy Spirit and he will teach you all things. He taught me. I told you it was, it was I hate it. It looks, it looks disgusting in my sight. I have to take it away and burn them. Nobody taught me. I used to be surprised when people would say they are born again, they are born again, but all those attribute all those elements is still in their body. It makes me, I, I don't know how they got born again. You know, sometimes I will ask in an in a, in a evangelism like this, I will ask, are you born again? He say, yes, please, can you share the testimony of your being born again? Some of them will begin to tell story, I shoot a bird, the bird fly, he perch on the tree, you, you know? It cannot give you a, 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 a genuine word you will know that of a truth that this person have repented. So I think this is the time we need to pray for genuine repentance. We need to cry to God for genuine repentance, brethren. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So our sister, we know we have uh, ministers of God like you. Uh, we have so many women, uh, pastors' wives, daughters' wives, evangelists, uh, worship team leaders, but they dress the same way you used to dress. So does it mean the spirit of God is not upon them? And what can you give them? What can you tell them? What can you encourage? What message do you have for them? Praise the Lord. I want to tell them that they should look into their life. If they are not convinced, 
they should pray to God. Let them have the burden. Because the Bible said it's not our father's good pleasure. It's our father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And it's not his will that any should die or any should perish. So a lot of us are working, especially the women. But we are working contrary to the standard of God. God has standards. Uh, and I, I remember a day I, I went to visit a mother. That woman, she's a mother and she's an ev evangelized a lot. It has been long I met her last. Brethren, I want to tell us something. I visited her. She told me what happened. That they went for a vigil, pastor's wife, vigil. When she came back early morning, she said, let her have her rest before she will go to work. She's a civil servant. She said all of a sudden, as she was sleeping, she find herself in another world. But she noticed that it's not the normal world where we are. She mm -hmm. said the breeze is somehow, the weather is was somehow. Then all of a sudden, he was hearing a voice afar off. He said, my daughter, welcome my daughter. So she was calling. He said, which kind of place is this? The cloud changed. She told me, she said, it, do you know that this voice of God we are talking about, that no man can withstand the voice of God, the, the judgment of God, that the voice of God is like a thunder. You think about it, when we read the book of Jeremiah talking about the judgment of God, talking about the voice of God, it's like a thunder. So he said, she said she was coming, and the Lord, the voice told her that she should look. And she began to look, she saw women. When I talk about women, it was ministers of God, women. He said, these are my children. They, they have served me with their time. They served me with their money. They served me with all they have, they have. But all of them, she saw a place like a swimming pool, but there, is, that, there was a fire inside the swimming pool. And as they were coming with speed, those women, they, they line up, they were coming. One will come with speed and jump inside the, the pit. He said, these are my children that serve me with all their mind, with their money, with their time. But look at what is taking them in this pit. This is hell. He said, jewelry. He said, they were coming with lipstick. They were coming with a, a, a weevil. They were coming with all manner of things in their body. He said, this is my children. And they served me. They were serving me. But they were serving me with all this worldliness, all this ungodly dressing. Look at where it has taken them. So she, her eyes opened. When her eyes opened, she now began to preach. Not only preaching salvation, she will make sure she touch all the messages. The Bible says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded thee. She began to preach all. So brethren, I want to tell women, when we want to serve God, let us serve him in righteousness and holiness within and without. How will you wash a cup? You wash outside, you wash inside, and live outside. You know, women tell us that God look at the heart, not outside. Devil knows that that the human being does not see outside. So devil gave women that quotation to defend themselves. So I want to tell all women all over the world, God wants us to look like the way he made us. Please, if you know you are serving God and you have had encounter with the Lord and you have not taken notice of all this ungodly dressing, please go back to the Lord in prayer. Go and verify so that after serving God here on earth, you will not be a castaway. And I know it will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I can give up a pastor Jeff. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Lucy, we are coming back to you as a follow up question. Your restitution. Why, what would you tell a woman or a sister who is in a relationship where they are being misled by servants of God? We saw that in a church where you were, people were accusing you of being misled or of wanting you to destroy the church. What would you tell a sister 
because you chose that you there is no price too high to pay once you come to the knowledge of truth you have got to hold on to it 17 years of marriage is not something to throw away even two years of marriage you cannot throw it away what would you tell the sister what would you tell a brother you to call yourself i was a mistress after spending 17 years with a man that was after my heart. It's painful. What would you tell a sister who is listening to us now? Amen. Thank you for that question, Pastor Jeff. Yes, it is, it is not easy because I've been talking to several. I talked to one pastor. And I also talked to one brother who, who asked me, how do you do that? But when I mentioned to him, I said, God doesn't lie. And God is serious about marriage. He don't joke with it. He's very serious about it. He said, but I'm born again. I'm doing the work of God. Good. This, this man says, God gave him a wife. I say, he does lie. God created one man one woman. He said, yeah, my, but Jacob, and, and I say, but God allowed that generation at that time because the world, the, the world had to be filled anyway. Yeah, but with the same, with the same children of Jacob, God gave them that law. They should not, they should not put on this they should not marry many wives. They should not. And God said himself, I've married Israel as my wife. And I've divorced. I've given them a divorce, a divorce certificate. But he will restore them again to him, his wife. He will take him again. Why did God not marry another one? Why did he stay with Israel? And in, in Matthew chapter 19, Jesus was talking to the same Jews, the same people who God gave Moses permission to give them whoever wanted to divorce their wife or anything, to give them a, a, a divorce certificate. Jesus walked in that law, but now he was changing the law himself. He said, yes, but it was not like that from the beginning. But from this moment, I'm saying, if a man leaves his wife, him. So when I talking to these people, I say, read, who is that speaking those words? It's Jesus speaking. To who? To the Jews, who he was also walking in the same law of Moses by then. But why did he now say, it's now from today? He said, from today. If a man leaves his wife and marries another, you're committing adultery with her. It becomes difficult because that woman pastor told me, what about the children that are born in this? I say, you know what? We have brought children in this because of our sins. Mm -hmm. God has nothing to do with the children that came into this. We have brought them in need. And now that the children are there, the father of the children takes the responsibility of the children, but you have nothing to do with that man because he is married. He's not yours. So when the pastor told me, yeah, what about those who are married seven times? I say, seven times, married seven times. Who is now the husband? I say, that Samaritan woman was told, you are married five men, even the one you have is not yours. I said, that's how I saw myself. I've married so many men but this one I am, I have in the house was not mine. I say, you know what? If you love God and you're born again and you're walking with God and you can't walk with God if you don't obey him and you can't obey someone if you don't agree with him. The Bible say two cannot walk together unless they agree. I took that decision that this is the God that has to be feared. 
this is the God that is speaking. And I took that voice and say, no matter what that I'm going to face, no matter how much I left the money, I left houses, I left everything that was put on the table, I lived like a queen. I say, I don't care. I took nothing. I came out empty with my children. And I say, God, just lead me. And that's where the point where people say, where will I start? How do I start? What a shame I'm going to. One told me I had a, I had a meeting in my house every Thursday. We came for prayer meeting every Thursday. I had, I had my sisters who came to pray with me. But the moment I mentioned about that scripture, they all scattered. They left me. They told me, hey, I left the whole land. I, I said goodbye to everybody I was going to marry. And now you are telling me he's not my husband. How do I go back? And the husband came to accuse me that I want to, to disturb his marriage. I said, that woman is not your wife. She was married before. You were married before. And both of your husband and wife, they are alive. So if you're going to church, pray. I said, pray to God. If you don't believe what you, you are being taught, if you think what I'm reading, so, but if you pray, God, genuinely, God is going to speak to you. Amen. Because God wants us to obey him and do his Amen. will. Amen. Amen. As you, as you were speaking, the Galus came, something was being ministered in my spirit. You, you, were, you were speaking that uh, people are saying, they are, if there are children as a result of this um, relationship, illicit relationship that lasts for relationship, let me give you an example that was being ministered in my spirit. Somebody goes and drink beer. They take that, they drive a car in that, in that drunken stupor. As they are driving a car, they meet a family that are driving out for holiday. They run into a car, the father, the mother, and probably three people from the family, they are fatally, they are, inv they are involved in an accident. Three of them are fatally injured that they, they, are, wheel they are confined to a wheelchair. This man probably is, he will become a born again. Is there anything that is going to be, is there anything that is going to be done? Or is there anything that is going to do if he becomes a patient to the condition of these people who are on, on the wheelchair now? The person, you mean the person who caused the accident? Yeah. Hmm. Now that I'm a pastor, I cripple these people in the drunken super. I was not a pastor. I was in the world, that's how I lived my life. Now I'm a born again, I'm a new creation. But then in my ignorance or lack, lack of it, that's what happened when I was in the world. What happens? Am I going to turn back the hands of time and change the things? Amen. Amen. So people cannot use that as an excuse. Amen. Because when you are getting in that relationship, you do not consult God. Amen. Neither should you consult to say, God, you know there are children. God cannot be held responsible for the things that you do. Exactly. If you get into a relationship, Luke chapter 16, verse 18 makes it very clear. Once you take somebody that has been divorced, whether it's a man or a woman, you are an adulterer or an adulteress. Romans chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. These Bible verses they are very clear. So there are no two ways about it. We can argue for all we care here because we've got people in our congregations that we, you know, we are pandering to certain, um, to, 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 to certain people in our congregations. There's, some, there, there's a, um, a conference which is coming here in Austria where I was asked to minister to ministers actually. So there's something that the Lord was ministering to me. So it was part of the things that were being ministered. As I was just pondering some of those things, I was just looking at it say, why is it pastors have become so afraid of certain people in the church? 
these are people that they are, we call them the um, what is power brokers in the church. People, pastors that are, these are the people who are now um, powerful people in the church. They tell pastor what to do. Pastor, the message that you preached here, we do not want to hear it again. That's why I preach without fear or offense because I don't need anything from anybody. If you become a pastor that is looking to say, I want to, we want to pay rent, we want to pay the kittens, the moment you are bound from bound to do anything from any one of the members, they will start telling you what to do. Because whoever is paying for something is going to tell you what to do. Unless if you let God say, God, if I need anything from this church, let that money be coming from you. Then you are not restricted by members. This is why most pastors are now in bondage. They are being told they become shut figureheads only in the church. And people say, Pastor, this is what I want. When you get into that pulpit, I want you to see there are people who are playing Holy Spirit in the church now. They cannot come and tell, I do not want you to talk about the marriage or talk about this because the man who is talking is on the third marriage now. The woman that pastor has appointed a deaconess is now in the third marriage. So pastor cannot come and talk about these things. That's why the church is in the rotten state. I know of a pastor who is in the second marriage, a pastor. Just imagine. And this same pastor is claiming to be a holiness pastor. When I mentioned these things, people became angry. I said, I don't need anything from anybody. I was still mentioning these things. Everybody became angry. Says, no, if you want to fight with me, well, I'm, I'm equal to the task. But I will still speak the truth. They said, we will, we will not invite you. I said, I'm not trying to be invited. They will still invite me. I said, it's God who invites me. If you don't invite me, I will not try to be invited. It's not about being invited. It's about telling the truth. So people, this is, this is why we are so, you know, it, it's like, the, it's really said why we, we, we have chosen to compromise actually. There are certain topics that churches avoided to talk about. We see certain wrong things now we cannot come and talk about. We see people in our midst, yes, we know this brother, we see they are cuddling. Man and man, John and John are cajoling in the church. He cannot be coming and cajoling in the church. You came to hear the word of God. Not in the church where I'm pastor. Yes, I'll ask you to go to get out. You cannot be coming and question and say, ah, we are just we are just rubbing each other. You came here to listen to the word of God. You cannot come and say in a two, three hour session, you cannot come and say we are missing each other. You cannot be coming and making in the church. Excuse me. There are places to be doing those things. This is the, there are certain behaviors that are inexcusable. Where you, as a pastor, you put your head on the block. You see, this behavior, if you stay, if you put your foot on the block, say, these things, I do not want them in the church where I'm pastoring, people would know this is a no nonsense church. If you, if you have got to do it elsewhere, people will learn to behave. It becomes the standard. And say, no, it is Europe, it is America, it is this. There is no God for Europe. Do you think if the Lord Jesus Christ is here, or if a prime minister of a country or somebody is sitting there, they will start coming and holding each other? No. It is only in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ that we do it. Because people will say, no, it's love, it's America, it's Europe. That's all, all this, where this kind of nonsense is coming from. Pastors is asking now, so you guys, what? So you guys, you know, this kind of language. I rebuked one guy. Pastors are sitting. So you guys, a 16 year old girl. So you guys, I said, excuse me. A young girl younger than my last born son. I said, excuse me. You younger than my old last born son. Who are you saying, guys? He said, no, she doesn't know. I said, you sit there, Pastor, and you excuse that behavior. You excuse that behavior, say, out of ignorance. He said, no. These are inexcusable behaviors because the people sit and say, yeah, it's normal. What is normal? These are things where we can correct people instead of saying, you know, it's normal. 
That's how they speak. That's how they speak. These are things that we need to correct. So we, we are going to make um, full length videos. Of, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Praised a lot. I don't know what happened with our internet connection. Yeah. Are we still seeing me? Yeah, we can see, we can hear you. Oh, okay, praise the Lord. I don't know what happened to our internet connection. Sorry. So I said because of our time, uh, we wanted to restrict the, um, the questions. So we're going to produce a full length video uh, inter of interviews so that we can hear every other thing that we, uh, especially the juicy part of the testimonies, so that we can draw conclusive lessons about um, the testimonies, things that we need to learn. One thing that really makes me angry is about the state of church, especially for people who came from Africa intending to learn more about mm. God. Now they are saving the God of Europe. They think Europe is better. There's nothing better about Europe. Europe is the same as Africa or America or this one. We need to stand about things that we believe in. It is the Europeans, the Americans that brought this gospel to us from Africa. Now we are bringing back this gospel to Europe, to act to America. Let us not be compromised. Let us stand on the truth. <laughs> So brethren, we'll be bringing full length testimonies by the grace of God from next week. You will be seeing them on YouTube. We'll be posting them in our groups. We'll be encouraging you to be sharing our um, journey of salvation magazines, the three editions. The last part of uh, the third edition magazine, I think it's quite interesting. It has got a lot of very interesting magazines. Last corrections are being made. I think Brother Olatunji Oyemi is helping us with some corrections. And I think before the end of the week, most of the corrections are done. At the end of the month, we are starting with printing. So the hard copies before the end, before the middle of the next month, we should be distributing them out. I hand over to Dadachimi. I want to thank our ministers. I want to thank those that have, are joining us from other um, ministries. I've seen some, um, I think Sister Iabo Olumofini, some, and uh, I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not saying others very well, but um, others from- <laughs> You pronounce this, you try, sir. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> the Lord is my strength, thank you. Some, some words are a little bit difficult. I don't know whether it's your power of people. This one confuses me a little bit, but I do, okay. Thank you, sir. So thank you very much for coming and for the support. Next Let's just begin to glorify the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Worship, Lord.